My name is Benoit Peters. I'm a comics author, comics writer, and also a visiting professor in Lancaster University. I'm glad to be with you, even we are not together in the same room. And we will speak today briefly about time, space, and narration in the language of comics. And there is a very interesting sentence of the great author Art Spiegelman, the author of Mouse, celebrated graphic novel. And Art Spiegelman once said, cartooning is the art of turning time back into space. And we will try to see with four examples how it can work. And the first example is the great, great American author at the beginning of 20th century, Winsor Mackey he is the author of Little Nemo in Slumberland and many other comics. And in those unbelievable, beautiful uh, Sunday pages of Little Nemo, we directly see how he wanted to use the page as a wall thing and to give, of course, a succession of panels of images, a sort of narration, but to give a wall image. Here you can see in this famous page, in the first line, which is a title line, we have some balloons, some speech balloons, and of course we read them from left to right, and we also have the progression of the elephant from left to right, but we have this small impression of the uh, um, elephant coming very close to us. So it's a sort of time machine because let's say the action uh, needs two, three, four minutes uh, to, to, to be done, but we feel it directly as one thing. And there are many, many examples in Winsor Mackey's pages of a very clever use of the whole page. Because Little Nemo in Slumberland is not a, a continuous story. There, yes, there is some succession from week to week, but basically the page is a unity that you have to discover in this very large format, in this very large size. Here it's for a, a New Year page, and we have a general aspect, a sort of a, a double line, a triangle form, but what we feel is that each line of images is one continuity, one thing, and the second part of the page is very, very different. So with the colors, the balance of colors, it gives this impression of unity with the very small last image of Nemo falling out of his bed. We have the spirit, the generic spirit of this little Nemo um, story. But what we see is the pure idea of time turning back into space. The situation is becoming smaller and smaller. The Earth is becoming smaller and smaller. And so we go from one year to another in a very direct and visual and graphic form. This is a perfect use of comics. And if you imagine... A, um, an animated story or a movie or a painting or a theater play, you couldn't give this impression. Mackey, working in the beginning of 20th century, directly believed in the language of comics and its specific possibilities. He was probably influenced by Darwin's theories about the origin of spaces and the transformation, which was a very influent in the second part of 19th century, in the beginning of 20th century, and there were a lot of caricature about uh, uh, Charles Darwin and his theory of evolution, and we can see that um, in some pages the transformation is also a transformation for, from a fixed reality, like a tree, to an animal like in, in this page, and so there is some fantastic event happening in the page. The time that is manipulated here is not a realistic time, but a purely visual and graphic form. This is the idea of 
turning a, a, a graphic ID into a small story, like in many wonderful pages in New York and Chicago with the skyscrapers, the transformation of the big city, and this idea of the scale. So here we are in a perception of, of space. The characters are becoming smaller and smaller, the, the building bigger and bigger, but sometimes the characters are acting like in a, in a model city. Uh, it's, it's not a real background. Um, there are so many inventions, week after week, during a little more than 10 years in, in Little Nemo, and this is probably the most famous page with the walking bed. And you can see how he's using the small line of images uh, and then a bigger one and a very large one in the last part of the page. This is an impossible reality because there is some continuity from one image to another, how to go from inside the bedroom to outside, how to have the legs uh, of the um, bed growing and growing and growing through the city. But the whole thing is a transformation of space and time. The second example uh, is more recent and not so famous. It's um, um, author, a British author who lived in Canada and Australia and then in France and his name is Martin Vaughan James. And in the middle of the 70s he published some visual novels he didn't use the term of graphic novel, but more visual novels. And it's close to comics, but it's in a, in a way in a sort of margin. And his masterpiece, The Cage, was published in 1975. And recently uh, republished in Toronto, where it was drawn at that time. In The Cage, we have uh, double pages. Uh, with a strict separation, uh, we have two panels, but a sort of continuity, and it's a fantastic landscape, and we are traveling through this landscape. We don't see any character. We are the character, we are the camera, we are the eye, and we are walking through the landscape. But we have incredible transformations from one double page to another, so we are not uh, going in a, in a continuity, in a possible continuity, but when we turn the page, we discover a new reality, some sort of transformation in time and space, as if for every 100 meters, some years happened. Uh, this is a very incredible experience. Here we have a, a bedroom. We could think that it's something like a Van Gogh's bedroom with a simple bed and one chair and some clothes, but no character. And we see on the first double page some sand. And on the second double page, a lot of sand and a lot of small transformations. So you want to, to go back from one page to another to see all this transformation and in the third double page of this sequence um, we have a, a total a mess, a total disaster and the sand is there everywhere. It's a very interesting use, I think, of the possibility of a graphic novel to tell a reality through words and image, which is an impossible reality, but which is a paper reality. And when we read the book, we believe that we are entering in, in, in such an incredible world and universe. So here on the fourth and last double page that I, I show, uh, the fans has recovered everything. My third example is very famous. It's probably the most important comics author uh, those days. His name is Chris Ware. Maybe you recognize his face. He's the author of Jimmy Corrigan, Building Stories, 
but I will just concentrate on one small story by uh, Chris Weir, not the most famous of it. Uh, it was a story of Lint, one volume of Acme Novelty Library, and Lint in a slightly transformed version is now part of the last book of Chris Ware, Rusty Brown. And this Lynn story is a story of the life of a character, Jordan Lynn, and each page of the book is one year of his life. And we perceive it as a whole thing with different details here his baby and we see things as he could discover them in, in a very naive way and on the uh, next page that I show but there are many pages uh, in between he's a kid discovering words and colors and you see the uh, totally different layout here he's becoming an adolescent uh, obsessed by music and, and, and girls and sex and everything and we feel uh, through those pages we try to tell with 5, 10, 12 images the main impression of one year of his life we have a perception that is simultaneous and uh, continuous in the same moment which is extraordinary. We, we, we first perceive the page as a whole thing and then we try to read it to enter in the details, the very small text, the very small images, but it's not the narration, the classic narration of one moment of this year. It's, it's just the main uh, elements, um, let's say, of the memories that the character could have at the end of his life. Here is a young man, an adult, he meets the woman of his life, he will marry her, but they both are becoming old and the thing is continuing through the 70 pages of this book uh, and we have this impression of life and maybe of how we can remember our life, how we can dream it or regret it. It's um, a totally new possibility uh, of telling a story. It's not just telling an adventure. It's not just telling a, a funny story, uh, a superhero story. It's really entering deeply in the way that we perceive reality. We are, let's say, in the brain of the character. And my last um, example is Richard McGuire, an other American cartoonist. And I will just say a few words of his uh, most famous book, very important book, uh, called Here. On the cover that I show here, you just have this small title, even though the name of the author is very geometric composition. And the idea um, of the book here is more directly connected to space uh, than to time. In the first look we are uh, discovering one house and the landscape around this house uh, at different moments and with many panels. But what we will discover is that we are traveling in this house but through different periods and even different centuries and we have to read the whole book to have a right perception of this space and time. So the first inhabitants, the, uh, the grandparents, the, the, the children, uh, a lot of, of uh, strange elements that we don't understand at the beginning but in each panel we see a date so an indication, this was in the 17th century, this was 1948, and we have the um, animals uh, living there many years or centuries or thousands of years before the house was built. 
It's of course uh, connected to a very specific memory of Richard Maguire. This house is connected to his personal stories, family story, but it's also the impression that we can have that we are traveling constantly in space and in, in time. And you can see that the way that he is using the panels and uh, uh, giving the impression that we have many levels in, in, in one page, uh, it's a totally new use of the comics page and the comics language. And when I first read this book, I, I was totally fascinated. It was first published as a very short story in the magazine Row, um, a, a very short story in black and white, but the concept was so great that he created a wall story, a wall book. Of course, uh, there are so many other possibilities about time, space and narration in comics and those examples are maybe a little experimental but it shows that we have new ways to explore this language of comics and it can be as rich as movies or literature or theatre if you work specifically with the different tools that you have for comics and graphic novel using in a total freedom the elements of number, panels, text, design, abstract elements. I think that uh, it is a real masterpiece. And so we can remember and maybe read a little differently the sentence of Art Spiegelman and meditate about it, even if we are telling a more classic story, cartooning is the art of turning time back into space. And now I hope that you will meditate about this, read maybe a little differently some uh, comic books or graphic novel or create your own graphic novel using time, space and narration. Thank you very much for your attention.